tell me a story about either a school or maybe teachers, somebody who really took advantage of self-determination theory or what they did looked like it was certainly taking advantage of self-determination even if they didn't know that was what they were doing. That's an interesting question. I guess what I'll focus on is the is the school that uh, school without walls by the way in rochester right. new york uh that i was the principal of for 23 years i taught there for initial two years and then became principal but it started in 1971 as a result of several teachers at a traditional high school who were interested in a lot of the stuff that was going on in terms of challenging traditional educational values mm -hmm. People like Sid Simon, Howie Kirschenbaum, of course, John Dewey, and others mm. were in the mix. And uh, these people got together and uh, with a group of students and a group of parents and proposed to the school board. Uh, this was 1969, so it was mm. the age of everybody questioning everything, you know, everything from religion to schools. And that tended to work pretty well because the liberal board at that time who had also passed a new policy for integrating the schools within mm -hmm. uh, racially integrating the schools so you had a liberal board that said yeah that makes sense we ought to have a a school that ideally uh, and idealistically i guess uh, achieves the goals that you guys are after having excited kids who come to mm -hmm. school because they want to be there and can pursue some of their interests and make decisions about the mm -hmm. school. That sounds like a reasonable kind of thing. So they passed it and gave the the teacher leader at that time, I think he was the English department head at that time, the same as mm -hmm. Lou Marx, the ability to recruit a staff of interested people and plan things out in terms of where and how we would, would recruit students or whatever. So at the same time, I was working with, I was a teacher at the junior high that had proposed the same thing. It's kind of interesting mm -hmm. that there were three kind of alternative, if you will, schools going on at that time. There was the World of Inquiry Elementary School in Rochester that uh, was the result of a federal government grant mm -hmm. and input. And they did some really good things. Interim Junior High, where I was at, was the result of a group of politically powerful parents and Kodak, the corporation mm -hmm. that pushed this. And mm -hmm. School Without Walls, interesting enough, was the result of teachers getting together and recruiting students and parents to be the motivators and the uh, implementers behind it. It's interesting that after over 60 years now, since 1971, I think that's well over 50 years, <laughs> uh, that School Without Walls is the only school that has remained intact and maintained its philosophy and methodologies in terms of continuing. So, yeah, yeah. So that was the beginning of School Without Walls, and they had a number of, it's interesting again, that the things that they implemented, which replicated a good deal of the Dewey schools at that time mm. and beliefs of people like Simon Kirschenbaum, Herbert Cole, and Postman and Weingarten, those folks, that it implemented a number of those things, but they didn't call it uh, self-determination theory. Right. It right. was just things that made sense in terms of democracy and involvement of kids and, and in terms of intrinsic motivation, although they didn't call it intrinsic motivation. I think, right. they, I think the, the key words were more student ownership at that time. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, and I can go on to explain some of the organizational aspects were that not only uh, implemented, but kind of maintained and self-developed uh, some principles of self-determination theory. Yeah, go ahead. This is the Agentic Schools Vodcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible is the satisfaction of psychological needs. So that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. 
I'm your host, Don Burr.